I'd like to welcome you to Bruce Valley for this Memorial Day service. And uh, first of all, we're going to raise the American flag, and Ernie Logo is going to send the national anthem. So, the ones that are able, stand and salute with a hand over the heart. Oh, say can you see by the crown's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Order, order. Parade press. Okay. See if I can hold the pages together here. Okay. The opening prayer. Ernie, you're back up again. <laughs> I gotta put my cheaters back on. Let us pray. Today we bow our hearts and our hearts to you, O Lord, that we may remember those who paid the ultimate price by giving their lives for their country. We can never be grateful enough for the sacrifices they made, and we are humbled by their willingness to put their own lives aside for the benefit of ours. Father, carve their sacrifices into our hearts so we may never forget the loss of these heroes. We pray for this in the holy name of, of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. We have a poem, My Flag, by Mitchell Halverson. Is he here? Behind us. Huh? Not here?
Gettysburg Address by Bob Goopsman. Gilso. Gilso? Okay, Bob. Kind of windy up here. Yeah. Okay. Four score and seven years ago, our forefathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that, that the nation might live. It is, also to get, it is also altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you, Bob. Now we have a very very special guest here today is going to Mr. Reynolds Thompson. Bill? I'd like to start uh, start off by thanking the uh, Bruce Valley Church here for uh, giving me the opportunity to in introduce a great friend of mine, Reynolds Thompson. I'm really humbled and honored to be able to do it. When Judy asked me if I would do the introduction, I said, sure, he's a friend of mine, I know him, I'd be happy to do it. And then I started doing some research, looking into newspapers and all that sort of thing, and I found out that what I knew about Reynolds was sort of like what the Titanic knew about that little chunk of ice in front of him. And just like that chunk of ice, there's a lot more than what we see. Uh, to Reynolds. He's a great, great man. Now, he's been in the news a lot lately. We've had, uh, I think, all three local or area TV stations have been out here. The uh, radio, uh, social media, newspapers, everyone's been out to honor him as he turned 105. And that's really quite, quite an amazing feat. But what makes Reynolds great is not that he's lived for 105 years. What makes him great is what he has done during those 105 years and how he's done it. Uh, he is uh, just a great man. Today I want to tell you just a little bit about what I know and found out about him. First off, he's a World War II veteran. And there aren't many World War II veterans around. Um, I first met him, I was at a Veterans Fair in Arcadia at the uh, Arcadia Memorial Park. Those of you that know it, there's a nice long walk from the shelter where we were at a benefit fair. A long walk down with all the statues along the way. Uh, he asked me to, uh, to walk with him down through there. And we walked from one end down to the other talking, me mostly listening. And by the time we got back, I knew I had I had read, met a truly great man. Back during World War II, uh, Reynolds was a young man. He was married, had a small child, and he got his notice from the county to report to Milwaukee for an induction physical. 
He took off from Milwaukee, obeying his orders, went down to Milwaukee, hoping that if he were selected, that he would be selected to go to the Navy. He wanted to serve in the Navy. Uh, and there, he was kind of happy that day because he, he heard that the Navy was, was picking a lot of people that day from the crowd uh, that was in there for their physicals. He was in line with a bunch of guys and they were going down, Navy was taking, Navy was taking, the guy in front of him was going to the Navy and then they got to Reynolds and he says, Army. And just like normally happens, you know, with government stuff. Well, Reynolds didn't uh, just say, okay, I'll go to the Army. He thought, well, there's a recruiter just down the street a little ways for the Merchant Marine. And uh, so he walked down there and registered with the Merchant Marine. And uh, then it was just a matter of which service was going to call him first, which service had the need and, and made the call up. And uh, he was called by the Merchant Marines. He, so he entered the uh, Maritime Force as a member of the Merchant Marines. Now, the Merchant Marines is kind of an unknown force. If you ask people to name the uh, different armed forces, you probably get the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Sometimes people even remember the Coast Guard. And now every once in a while people even talk about the Space Force. But very seldom do people talk about the Merchant Marine. It's a very unknown force that is, I don't quite understand why it isn't as well known as it is. Basically, the, mar the merchant marines uh, use, using civilian vessels are hauling equipment, supplies, troops to war zones or wherever they're needed. And these ships were manned by the merchant marines. Uh, Reynolds, um, you know, he was, went back and forth across the ocean. These guys going across the ocean were basically sitting on powder kegs, and, and I literally mean sitting on powder kegs many times as they were making the trip across. 17 days out there uh, facing the natural uh, hazards of an ocean voyage, plus the uh, submarines were just waiting for these ships. Uh, Reynolds one time here showed me a picture of an article, or an article from a newspaper that was written by German World War II sub uh, drivers or sub crews. And they talked about how they laid out just outside of our ports. Some of them were actually in the harbors watching to see which ships were getting loaded with what so they knew which ships were the best targets to use uh, their ammunition up on. And uh, it's kind of amazing that we came out on the winning side of that war as uh, we left our, the subs right out there watching us. But um, the danger yeah, the danger was real, that, uh, that's one thing for sure. Reynolds served his tour in the Atlantic and Mediterranean oceans. Um, I can tell one thing about him is that people in the, uh, on board the ships really liked him. For one thing, he was a very likable person, and for another, he was the baker. He made the bread and the pies and fed the troops. So. Anybody that's been around a military unit of any kind realizes that uh, those are the guys you kind of buddy up to. Uh, and if any of you f have fed teenagers, when you've got a boatload of teenagers, and I mean a boatload, it, you got your hands full. And he indicates that uh, there wasn't always great uh, equipment on board. Mixing uh, the bread, there weren't nice big mixers and that sort of thing. So. Uh, he he did uh, went through a very difficult time uh, with it. After World War II, uh, our nation decided to give our World War II veterans a very good veterans benefits. We had education, home loans, all sorts of good things for uh, World War II veterans coming back. But one of the greatest miscarriages of justice, they decided that the members of the Merchant Marine were not eligible. Um, it's uh, still cannot fathom why that happened, but it did. And it wasn't until 1988 when some of the World War II veterans were finally given uh, entitlement to some of the, uh, the veterans' benefits. And Reynolds has never been bitter about that. 
any time that he would come into the office when I was in the veteran service office, um, he was just very happy for what little benefits that we might be able to give him. Always, always with a smile. Our Congress here just uh, within, I don't know, the last two weeks or so, uh, finally got around to uh, awarding a uh, Congressional Gold Medal to the Merchant Marines, um, the Mer Merchant Mariners, uh, and they had a very nice ceremony uh, in Washington, D.C. It's, it's only about time now since, uh, uh, I don't know why they had to wait till almost all of them were gone, but um, they are going to make some replicas of that, and hopefully we'll have them out here one day someplace to, to present a replica of that award uh, to Reynolds. One of the things when I was searching for information on Reynolds, I found that he's a very civic-minded individual. If there's anything that he could do to help other people, especially in the Pigeon Falls areas, he was out there at the forefront to do it. Um, he was involved in just about every organization that there is, and he wasn't just a member of the organization, he was involved in the actual working of the organization. Those of you that belong to any organization realize that when it comes time to elect officers, everybody's hiding. Uh, not Reynolds. Reynolds is out there in the forefront, always uh, an officer doing just about everything that he could with each of the, each of the groups. He's a lion. He was a charter member, or as a charter member, of the Pigeon Falls Lions Club, was there at it, was founded, and it was an officer right away with the group and continued to, to work with it. The Lions uh, motto of we serve, it definitely fits uh, Reynolds. He's active with all kinds of groups, Boy Scouts, 4-H, especially in the fundraising department. They always got him when they were looking to raise some money. Um, the uh, Pigeon Falls, the city itself, or the village of Pigeon Falls, probably would not be there if it wasn't for uh, Reynolds. Uh, he was very active in getting the um, the village incorporated and become a village and then that's not that's just kind of the start when you get incorporated as village then it was water and sewer and fire department and he was very active in all of those active in all of those <coughs> in all of those endeavors um, area needed a hospital tri-county memorial hospital was getting started up and guess who was out there at the forefront raising money he was one of the section chiefs to, to go out and raise funds, and we probably wouldn't have a hospital here, or that's, and now we're getting a new one, but for the many years that we've had a hospital there, probably wouldn't have been there without Reynolds. When the Pigeon Falls School needed a, an addition to the building, there was Reynolds at the, at the forefront again, raising the funds. He was active in Tri-County Telephone Cooperative. They go through up and down our valleys here, we've had uh, excellent service, uh, fiber optics, long before any other places because of Tri-County Telephone Co-op and he was on the board many years ago and kept that, got that organization going and it's, it's continued to be a good organization. Pigeon Falls Nursing Home, another one that wouldn't be there without Reynolds. Many more activities that I could go to but if I continue going through we'll be celebrating his 110th birthday out here if I were to, if, to get to all he's done. He's a very good businessman too. He was uh, started out working at the store in Pigeon Falls, and those of you that may know a little about that store, it a, was a great big store. They had everything in that store that anyone in the area would need. They had uh, groceries, they had clothing, they had hardware, furniture, a little of everything. Uh, Reynolds once told me that they had everything there from cribs to coffins and anything else that you'd need between the two. <laughs> Matter of fact, they had two ambulances there and a hearse. At times he was called on to drive those vehicles. So he's had a, a, a quite a business. It, just tracking inventory in a place like that had to be a, quite a bit. He started off working in the business and later owned the business and worked there, ran that for many, many years. Later in life, he did do some uh, a realty company that he started up and then then when he started going to uh, become a snowboard, a snowbird, uh, it didn't work out too good, so he stopped that and almost, say he sort of retired, but I kind of doubt it. Now, nobody becomes a great man like uh, Reynolds is by themselves. Um, 
and I think that's true with Reynolds too. Um, we've all heard that behind any great man is a great woman, and in this case there definitely was, and I think I could probably say great family. Uh, his wife, Dorothea, he married her in 1939. She was a teacher in Pigeon Falls, did not just teaching, but she was involved with all the school activities and all that, uh, uh, church, schools, all of that. Um, the family has kind of carried on the, the terms of service. Their daughter, Julie, and I can't even see where Julie is, but, uh, oh, there you are, um, a nurse. Uh, his son was in the, uh, uh, Navy, son was in the Navy, Julie's husband was, well, oh, Air Force, okay, <laughs> had a, a Navy and an Air Force, so they've continued the, the service, and I could continue on here, but I better stop. Um, Ella Wheeler Wilcox once said, the truest greatness lies in being kind and the truest wisdom in a happy mind, and based on that definition, I want you to know that Reynolds is probably truly one of the greatest and one of the wisest of the greatest generation. Please join me in giving Reynolds a round of applause here. Okay. Yep. Well, here I am, folks. It makes me tired now to think about all of it. <laughs> but it's been an enjoyable trip, and I tell you what, I'm so thankful to be here today because you people turned out to celebrate an event that includes me. And I got to thank the American Legion from Osseo and the Legionnaires and the other Legion members and and the Restoration Committee that invited me to be here today, it's unreal. And I really appreciate it. And I, as far as I'm concerned, I, it seemed like it turned out to be a peanut butter salesman <laughs> instead of anything else. And then up at the store, and in my life I was hoping I could either be a mail carrier or a barber, nothing turned out. <laughs> but I appreciate being here today, folks. You're wonderful, and you're having a blessed event. This is quite an honor and a nice event. I thank you all for everything. And may I add this? Let's get busy and talk to everybody in America about peace. That's it, and I thank you. I'll see you next year. And my, my motto is this, have a nice day unless you have other plans. <laughs> okay. I want to give you this flag, but also the uh, County Legion, the County oh. American Legion's got a little certificate here they'd like Good. to present to you. Okay. Let me use the microphone here a minute. Yep. I want to thank uh, our Heavenly Father Reynolds for blessing you with the life he's, he's, he's given you. And everything you've done is, is your gift back to him. Um, as commander of the Tupper County Council, uh, I'd like to present you, uh, Reynolds, with a certificate of appreciation in recognition and service and sincere appreciation of outstanding service and assistance which contributed to the advancement of the American Legion programs, activities dedicated to God and country. We thank you for your continued dedication and service to God and country at 105. So on behalf of the Temple County Council, uh, I'd like to award you with a certificate, Reynolds. Thank you. Thank you. you Thank more. you. Thank you. Reynolds, I'll take that. That way you can walk. Okay. okay. I'll guide you down again. Going down? Yep. Okay. Right over here. Bill's going to see it. 
Well, he's going back to his seat. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't introduce one gentleman here. Uh, when I was a veteran service officer, I ran into a remarkable man down at the uh, Wisconsin Department of yes. Veterans Affairs. He's a gentleman that went around uh, from county to county setting up uh, uh, exhibits and displays, benefit fairs that would uh, let uh, veterans know about what is available for them. General Andy Schuster uh, is a retired Army National Guard. He's a member, spent most of his years with our own 32nd Infantry Division. General Schuster, welcome to Bruce Valley. Okay. Now we're going to get to our guest speaker, Mr. Chris Prentice. He's the director of the High Ground at Nielsville. He's a 23-year veteran of the United States Marine Corps and heck of a nice guy. He's got a busy job. Here, Chris. Thank you, Buzz. It's a little, uh, little hard to follow the uh, life of this fine young man right here, but I will do my best. And to those that are standing, I will do my best to get this done in a few minutes because I know those flags and rifles are getting a little heavy. Everybody hear me okay? Our flag does not fly because the wind moves it. It flies with the last breath of each soldier who died protecting it. Today we remember and pay tribute to the men and women who have given their life in service of our country. Since World War I, over 440,000 Americans have died in defense of our freedom. They're not just fallen heroes or warriors. They had a life, family, friends, goals and dreams for their future. And maybe it's foolish to mourn the men and women who have died, but they'd rather be thankful that such individuals lived. Those who have long enjoyed the privileges we have forget in time those that have died to keep them. And their courage in the face, their courage in the face of fear that few will ever have to experience warrants more of one day of honoring in their life. We cannot only honor them today, but every day by honoring and living a life worth their sacrifice. Today we stand amongst those defenders of freedom. Some are still with us in body and mind, another only in spirit. To those veterans here today and their families, please know that I am humbled and proud to be in your presence. And I, and I appreciate and am grateful for your service. And for those among us only in spirit, I believe that we die twice. Once when we take our last breath and once when their name is said for the very last time. So I'm gonna take a few moments and I'm gonna read the names of those that are with us in spirit on this ground in which we stand. Edwin Anderson. Ronald Anderson. Orville Franson. Harvey Goonham. Donald Kensmore. Guy W. Kensmore. Russell E. Kensmore, Tommy C. Lee, Merlin C. Loga, Stephen D. Loga, Allard Skip Scovrod. Thank you. Well, the decorating of the cross for the young people of Bruce Valley. Flip it around. There you go. Good job, guys. Thank you. 
We'll now have a closing prayer by Ernie Liga, followed by a salute by the firing squad and taps. Let us pray. Father, you have blessed our country with great bounty. For this, we are thankful. Lord, you have always imbued your chosen ones with bravery and a willingness to serve. For this, we thank you. Father, you have blessed this nation with an indomitable spirit and determination to remain free. For this, we are thankful. Lord, we pray you'll help us always be grateful for the sacrifices that have been made to keep the USA free. May it always remain so. Now as we depart, we know that you have blessed us with the service of remembrance. Help us to never forget the sacrifices these men and women have made so that we may be free. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Take down, ten, hut! Rifle squad, fire three volleys! Rifle squad, four arms, and lock your weapon. Come to the ready. Aim! That concludes our ceremony, people. I thank you for coming. Okay. Detail dismissed. I need your notebook. Yeah, here. You can have it back. <laughs> Just a minute, guys. Um... Trudy, where's my write up? Did I steal it from you? No, there it is. You found it? Okay. I want to thank the Legion Post 324 for their yearly service coming to Bruce Valley, which has been over 30 years. To Mr. Ernie Loga for his words and prayers. To Bob Gilso for reading the Gettysburg Address. And to Mr. Reynolds Tompter for coming to Bruce Valley and resembling a World War II veteran. You better come back next year. We mean that. To Bill Toma for his great help in the recognition of Reynolds and doing his research and for his speech. To Mr. Chris Pettis, Executive Director of the High Ground from Nielsville. For those that did not know, he is the Director of the High Ground and I'm Thank him for coming today for the fact, I'm sure on Memorial Day, he's going to be up there. To Mitchell Halverson for playing the taps. He's done this more than once. And the young people who participate, which were my two grandsons, that has a mother from Thailand. So how they appreciate America compared to us. I want to thank everyone for sharing this day. Thank you for eating us out of all the meatballs and come back again.